we are going to make a brine shrimp hatching factory. I've used this aluminium and that's it. <laughs> Simple math, spicy. Simple math. I need to step up my brine shrimp game. I originally made my own little brine shrimp hatchery and that was pretty easy. I just got a Gatorade bottle and put a hole in it and just used some glue. That is kind of a touch and go situation. It kind of leaks a little bit. That's why I have it kept over the sink. It's no big deal if I crash that whole thing because these guys can live without brine shrimp for like a few months. <laughs> they don't need brine shrimp. I just give it to them as a treat. Instead of poking a hole in the cap, I went online and I saw these before and when I first created the brine shrimp hatchery I thought ah, I'm not gonna buy those. There's these little guys. They ate for ten dollars. <laughs> they basically are a little cap. See that? They're a little cap. They come to this little um, stem which you can put the airline right on there and then you can get the rest of the stuff, you know, your, your little one-way valve and then the little valves that allow air to go through. That air manifold, so you can have three of these going all at the same time. The other problem is finding a bottle that they're going to fit. I went around the house, water bottle, your average water bottle, too small. The neck is too small, it doesn't fit. This happens to be one of those hand soap containers. I like hanging these because then you have full access to all that stuff. I've seen people create these little holders. The thing that I did find, because you know, not everybody's gonna have this, so I thought, for the video, why not just head over to my local grocery store and see what they have. And you can get these medium-sized um, drink containers, or this is Wild Cherry. This is, uh, here, you can look at the title of what that is. You have a local Safeways where I got this one from. I took this with me and then I just kind of, I just kind of took a, a glance at it real quick. You can see that this is slightly wider than the top. Not by much, but so is this. This was the same, the same deal and it fits nice and snug. So I, I know it's going to fit on here. We are going to make a brine shrimp hatching factory. I'm really glad that I decided to head out to the grocery store to try and find something that um, would work for everyone. The threads on this are perfect. We're just going to go ahead and make this sucker. I'm going to take this apart. Ugh. See, your basic Gatorade bottle is... I had a bunch of these that come with um, airline tubing to connect. There's three-way, there's this kind of a T three-way, but there's the pass-through. There's these little guys, the pass-through airline tube connectors. And the reason why you want to use something hard plastic like this is because it glues better to the cap. And so what you'll do is you'll take this, and you see how there's this little ridge thing in here? You'll cut it. You'll make a cut right there. You can do it with a knife or just a pair of scissors. Then you melt a hole in the bottle cap with one of these bad boys. And when you melt that hole in there, then you put this into the cap and add glue, some super glue. And it holds pretty good and it's not, it hasn't leaked on me. Um, when I first made it, it leaked and then I added some hot glue and that stopped the leak. But that's kind of not a guarantee and I didn't want to do that anymore and so I found these. And these, <laughs> I mean, come on, it's built in, it's cheap. We need to cut a hole in the bottom and we also need to be able to hang it with something, whatever. You could probably use string or zip ties or whatever you want. I've used this aluminum. We need to cut a hole in the, in the bottom. All we really need to do is be able to put a spoon of salt and uh, eighth of a, a tablespoon of um, brine shrimp eggs. How do we cut that? That is extremely tough. And that's it. Now we want holes opposite each other. Let's see, what if we put one right here and right here? 
I'm gonna start using these. I really like these. These are pretty cool. And Viola. Look at that. Pretty, pretty cool. And now, let's go hatch some brine shrimp. <laughs> Done. I mean, that was super, super easy. This is the setup that you kind of have to have. And then I'm going to have the, the check valve right here, really close to the T. To the nice to have them really close to that T so that when you get the air flowing back through here, it'll pump it out. So now I can put uh, three more bottles on there if I want to. There, and there'll be a light here that can work for three, four, five of these bottles. I really like these because they're quiet. Or you can just get one of those big noisy ones. It really doesn't matter. If you put them in a room where you can't hear the pump, who cares how loud it is? <laughs> All right, let's go put them up. Okay, I'm back. Does anybody see the mistake I made? <laughs> so air's coming in this way. And we're going right up there and we're coming down here and I put this valve. And what I need here is a T and then the valve. So this valve is the wrong valve, number one. It actually needs a T, not this T, because that's not the right T. So this valve here, these valves are different. See that? This valve only controls what goes through here. Whatever is going through here is always going to go through here. Now this valve, on the other hand, um, water can go down this way, and then we can just shut off the valve and stop the water from going in. That's the one that we want. You know, I probably could use this, but I'd rather have something that goes straight down so the brine shrimp have a nice straight path when you're draining them. And why don't I have a straight T? Okay, so now we have our straight T. So complicated. <laughs> the air comes through here. This is shut off. The air is forced straight up in here and you get your bubbles. Then when you want to harvest, uh, you turn your pump valve off or turn your pump off so no air is going in. Then you let the eggshells float up to the top and you have your light down here so the brine shrimp are going to want to come to the light. The eggshells do float. Trust the eggshells do float to the top. I've seen other people take a magnet and swirl it around and try and collect all the eggs out of there with a magnet and it just gets messy. Don't, don't mess with that. That's a gimmick. What you want to do is you want to have this so that you can just suck up everything right out the tube and when you see the eggs starting to accumulate right there in the neck, pull this off. Let it drain into the sink or into a cup or container or whatever that you don't care about. And then you want to go wash this out pretty quickly because once the egg shells are in here, they will dry and stick in there if you don't clean it out. But just flush it out within half hour, you're good to go. Here we go, we're in action. I did want to show it's leaking. That's because you need to tighten it. So once the water starts coming through there, it, it wanted an extra little turn. I had tightened that on pretty good. But once you get water in there that's warm, it kind of loosens up a little bit and it'll take another turn. Maybe more than one turn. You can see where it's leaking right out there. So here, let's try that again. Let's loosen it and tighten it. So loosen it and tighten it. And that's pretty good. That's not too bad. I should probably space them two days apart, huh? If I space them one day apart, that's not enough because I don't harvest in 24 hours. I harvest 36 to 48 hours. <laughs> simple math, spicy, simple math. Every other day I should be harvesting the eggs out of there. Boy, I'm going to have to math this out and use some trigonometry and calculus. <laughs> I was wondering why that ball kept getting bigger and then it hit me. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs>